up, welcome back to my channel. Now today I'm going to be doing a video that I have not ever done before and I love to watch these and why haven't I done them. I'm going to be doing the craps product video. Now these videos can get a little controversial because sometimes people can get a little sensitive. So I wanted to come back on here because I finished my video. I know this is the beginning of the video, but this is after the fact of me filming the whole video and checking that the footage is okay. I have a new WAP and I'm going to start right here before the video. This lip tar that I just noticed that gave me like this butthole looking lip. You see that? Try the new lip tars that are in the tube because I used to have like the squeezy tube ones, but now I just realized that it gave me like this weird thing right here during the whole rest of my video. Now you can enjoy my video. Lip tar is my first WAP. So this video is going to be on my own personal opinion, my experience, what has happened to me with these products, and they just didn't work out. Now if they happen to work for you, that's freaking bomb. But for me, these products were really crap. And this video is just to show you the products that just did not work for me in case you were curious on them. These are in no particular order whatsoever, so let's get started. Okay, I'm gonna start off with the drugstore product and a lot of you know that I'm a big time fan of a ton of Maybelline products. I love the Better Skin, I love the Maybelline Pure Dream BB, I love the Concealer Fit Me, the list goes on. One thing that I think that they really failed to do was to really get this palette down, and this is the Nudes palette. I was really excited to get my hands on it because I honestly do not barely use any drugstore shadows unless it's NYX or Milani. I find that those two brands are really good. When I picked up this palette, I heard so many people raving about it. And when I got it, I had really high hopes, but the pigmentation is not there. I tried it with so many different primers, even to wet my brush, and I just thought the pigment was so terrible. It's almost like if you're gonna come out with a palette like these days, it has to be balm and pigmented and silky, because now drugstore eyeshadows themselves and other palettes are so good. This was pretty disappointing just because I love Maybelline. If you have tried this palette, let me know down below if you had problems with it, but even just like the gold on its own, way more shimmery than that. Like, why should I have to pile it on? Like looking at it, it's just so dull. I'm not a fan of this palette, so I do not recommend you getting this. I recommend you getting any other palette. Even Wet n Wild is way more bomb than this one. So the next product is another palette, but this is a high-end one for the face, and this is the Too Faced Selfie Powders. Now I know it sounds very gimmicky, but I'm someone where I wanna give a product a chance, and I'm actually really sad that I gave this one a chance. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of Instagram if you're not following me. What will Lizzie do? And honestly, I was thinking, wow, I'm gonna be a walking filter. Came with three different powders. This was the Sunrise, the Totally Toasted, and Moon River, each one I used. And I knew it was gonna be anything like life-changing, but something that can maybe add a little extra oomph is what I thought it was going to do. It was just layering powders. It didn't really do anything. Uh, the Cocoa Shade or Toasted looks like nothing. This Moon River, you dusted it over, it did nothing, and the sunrise, it it honestly did nothing. Each powder was pretty bad. Uh, I didn't have any good experience with any of them. If anything, the Totally Toasted is the one that really showed up, but that's because that's a brown shade. But the other ones, it was just like, Nah. I know I'm not the only one who didn't like that powder because I remember seeing reviews and no one liked it. Now a lot of us are always trying to achieve that really flawless under eye, nice and bright. We don't want any kind of cracking or creasing underneath our eyes. So I always love just trying out new powders for underneath the eyes. When something comes out for underneath the eyes, bam, I wanna try it. I ended up trying Sephora's brand and this is the Bright Set Powder in the shade Banana. Now when I put this on underneath my eyes, it is a loose powder and that is super, super yummy. Yellow, right? Well, that's how it really turns out underneath the eyes. A lot of people say the Ben Nye is pretty yellow for them. No, you have not met banana yellow until you met this one. When I placed it underneath my eyes, it looked very, very yellow. So if anything, I would really suggest this powder for someone who has much more deeper skin tones. But even someone who has deeper skin tones don't even try it because when I placed it underneath my eyes, Woo, roadmaps. I say roadmaps because it just looked like lines and streets and everything was going underneath my eyes. My eyes look so just cracked and dry and crinkly and <sighs> like literally 
This was so drying underneath my eyes. I haven't heard anybody talk about it that I personally watch, but I would not try it. I just wanted to try it because I feel like Sephora's brand kind of gets like tucked underneath the rug and there are some hidden gems in there, but this was definitely like, I don't know, a lump of coal. Very drying though. Very. Man, I have a lot of products for underneath the eye. Let's just go on to another one. This is a drugstore version now for an under eye setting powder, and this is the NYX Banana Powder. Like I said, I love trying setting powders. Now, I'm a big time fan of NYX, don't get me wrong. I love probably like 95% of their products. There are a couple here and there that I don't really like, but this one, this is the banana one. Oh my gosh, this one did the same exact thing as the Sephora one. It basically made my under eyes extremely dry. I I had just lots of creasing. Even with my favorite concealers, this made it look like crap. You know when you have like that go-to concealer where you're just like, that one's not gonna let me down. No creasing here, no under eye dryness, and looking awake and bright. Now this one did the complete opposite. Trust me, you looked really bright with this one, but just, Oh, it was just very drying as well. So, but what's really good about this one is that they happen to have a pressed one in a little compact form and the pressed form is good. You just have to kind of use it, use it sparingly. You don't want to put too much, but that one is not too great to set your concealer, but it's more of a highlight powder. So set your concealer with your favorite chances in powder. And then if you do the pressed one, put it on top just to help oomph it up that highlight a little bit more to brighten underneath, then it works great. So yeah, the loose powder is a womp, but the pressed powder is a whoop. I'm gonna stop on the under eye stuff because I have three more products for underneath the eyes. Yeah. Okay, so I did a whoop or a womp on this product and at first I kind of had like iffy feelings. Like it wasn't like a necessarily like whoop, but it wasn't a necessary womp womp womp. Now this is the Blotterazzi by Beauty Blender and if you don't know what this is, I can link my video down below, but this is basically a sponge used to blot within the day. So this is kind of taking the place of those blotting sheets and all that good stuff so that you can just blot within the day and it's not going to take off your makeup, you're not going to have to reapply powder. Well, I ended up like using it and I kind of said, I was like, well, I can see why someone really likes this. It doesn't, you know, manipulate the makeup. It wasn't that bad. But then after a while, like I started reading comments and I was like, oh yeah, that's true. A lot of people started making comments saying, well, even though you do have this little film in between each one, why would you want to keep a dirty sponge in here? You know, I mean, you can clean it like by the end of the night, but just knowing that there's a dirty sponge in here and I don't know, like germs and all that stuff. So after a while, I started like using this for like a couple more days and I was just like, this is just not for me. I'd rather just use an oil sheet and just toss it instead of stool, st stool. Not a video unless I stutter. But I'm sure a lot of people stutter, they just don't put it in, but I like putting it in. All my oils are going into this, making me think too much and I was just thinking, oh, those microorganisms up in there. Ugh. Now within the past years being on YouTube, YouTube, I've heard so many people just rave about this lash glue. And this is the House of Lashes uh, lash glue, and this one is in the dark adhesive. People have raved about the clear one and also the black one. I'm someone where I always use the black adhesive because I usually have like a liner. So I ended up ordering this with like a pair of lashes because honestly, I'm not too big of a fan of their lashes just because I find that the ban on some of them well, most of them for me are a little bit thick. I'm a fan of cocoa lashes, but let's get on to what I'm really supposed to be talking about. And whenever I use this glue, especially if you're going to use a thick banded lash, this would always lift on me, like every single time. So every time I wore lashes, which is like every day, and it started to lift, I was just like, this damn glue. It never ever kept any lashes down. It always lifted on the inside or the outside and I have never ever had that problem. I like the Duo Dark Adhesive. That's what just works for me. I know some people don't like that one either, but this glue did not work for me. I don't know, let me know down below if you have tried this glue and if it works for you, but every time I use this, they always lift. Oh, gotta go back to the under eye. So I got a little sample size, well not a sample, but I got like this little travel size of the Becca Brightening Under Eye. This is the Under Eye Brightening Corrector. This stuff is so thick and I've heard some people rave about this and honestly, if you have 
I don't know how this works for anybody, but it is so thick. You know when you start adding layers of makeup underneath, at least underneath your eyes, you're gonna start building up those layers and there's more chance of it creasing and not setting correctly and more cracking within the setting. So I ended up trying this out and this is so thick. So I don't know if you can see that in the pot, but it's just, I don't understand how anybody can use this. And even when I tap it underneath my eyes, watch, I'll do like a little swatch, just so you can kind of see like the texture of it. When, even when I tap this underneath my eyes, I don't see, I don't know if you guys can see like the sheen that it has, but it stays tacky like that. It never sets. So I don't know why people really enjoy it because you'll put it underneath your eyes to first correct, but it never sets. So how are you supposed to put your concealer? I don't know, I just feel like there's always some sticky icky icky underneath under there. But this being such a thick formula, it went into fine lines and made its own fine lines as well. I also tried the NYX Dark Circle one, same exact thing, super, super thick formula and it did not work for me too thick and made fine lines galore. And the same thing went for the pixie one. As you guys can tell, uh, my ass is really trying to look awake, but I tried this one and this one was super thick as well. I don't know what happened, but I have been really enjoying some certain pixie products too, which I wanna get to in another video, but the under eye one was not one that I enjoyed. Now let's go to a popular foundation that everybody always raves about, but I think until recently when they relaunched their formulation that people stopped talking about it, but I still hear some like rave about it. Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation. Now they came out and reformulated a formula that was already bomb. Not sure why they changed it, not sure what happened that made them think, hey, we have the wheel, let's remake the wheel. To me, the original formula of the Ultra HD was bomb skis. It lasted so long, it kept me matte, looked awesome in pictures, subsided my oils. Now with the new formulation, it's really great because there's a ton of shades, so I always love the taste the rainbow. But the problem that I have with the formula is now it doesn't subside my oils. And I found that it started like creasing in my laugh lines, which no formula ever does. And it didn't last long. It started getting patchy. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Isn't it supposed to get better? So unfortunately, the new formula did not get better for me. I still have my old bottle. And I don't know, I kind of just want to just put it to the side, put it in a box and just save it for super, super special days. I did do a review on this a ton of you agreed so didn't last on me at all and it's just a womp everybody and their mom has always been talking about this powder how awesome it is how cheap it is how everybody needs to get it it will change your life your under eye setting powder game will be on fleek on point on game keep it 100 now this one i tried so many different walmarts to find and i finally found it and i was so excited so i ended up picking up in two different shades now it's very affordable and all that so i didn't really mind but this is the Air Spun Powder. This powder to me smells so strong and really, really, I don't know, the smell is terrible. It has a super strong floral scent and I'm someone where I'm not too sensitive on scents, but this one was just like, woo! My nostrils flared out from the second I opened it up to the second I tried to set my under eye. Now with this one, I noticed that whenever I would bake with this one, it tend to make my under eyes look super, super dry as well and I'm not someone where I suffer from under eye dryness so with when any of these powders I'm talking about made me dry underneath I was just like why because I never have that issue but this oh I just have to like Ooh, even just smelling that to me, it just, it's way too strong. The scent does go away, but still at the same time, I just don't really enjoy it. It just went into fine lines, made my under eyes look, I don't know, it was too light of a powder for me as well, even the translucent. And I don't know, I'm just not a fan of it. I know a ton of people love it and I wish I loved it because I would definitely save money. Um, as opposed to buying my Laura Mercier translucent um, and other powders, but this one was a womp. Tarte uh, Cheek Stains. Now, at first when these came out, I had like a couple and I thought I enjoyed them because I placed them on my cheeks and then I would set it with a powder. The only thing is that I think that's really bad about this is that it's super, super sticky, so it never dries. So you place it on your cheeks right there, and look, that's a stunning color, right? And you blend it into your cheeks, I'm, 
I wasn't trying to flick you off right there. But whenever you blend it into your cheeks, it never sets. So even when you place a powder underneath, it's still sticky on your cheeks. Like my fingers are sticky right here. And even when I place it, like you could still feel the sticky film or residue that it has from this product. So I don't really recommend it because I just see this as it's going to slide all over. You have some sticky residue on your face. It's not, it doesn't set. So I honestly don't know who would like this product. It reminds me of the Becca under eye corrector because it just stays sticky. So, I mean, it's a beautiful shade. Maybe you can use it during like, I don't know, the pool or anything like that. I don't know, but this just formula, it would just really bug me just keeping that sticky, icky, icky on your face. Now I got this palette and I was so excited. And at first I honestly really did like it the first couple of days. And then after about a week of using it, I got a little disappointed. So this is the Urban Decay Gwen Stefani palette. And at first I thought it was so beautiful, but initially when I got it, I did do a giveaway with some of these as well. I just thought the shadows were so small whenever I saw pictures of this the eyeshadows looked huge on anybody's inst on everybody's Instagram I don't know the angles they were using were making it seem like they were double of this size and I don't know I just don't find myself gravitating towards this palette itself and the pigmentation I don't know it's like whatever it's it that that color is a nice one but it's almost like I don't know, even when I place it, I don't know, they're okay, but I find that I have to wet a lot of the colors to get a lot of pigment out of this. And I don't know, I'm just not like grabbing this palette. So it's not like one of my top picks, especially if you're someone who has so many eye palettes, you honestly want to get palettes that are different or you're still, even if it's a neutral palette that you don't need and you still can use it all of the time and it's another neutral, at least you're going to get use out of this. But this one I haven't even been getting use out of. And for my last product is my Smashbox Photo Finish Hydrating uh, Under Eye Primer. Now for this, I thought that this product was going to be a little bit similar to a face product product but a little bit more moisturizing because the under eye is a very sensitive area and obviously you want to make sure you like quench the underneath what quench the underneath you want to quench your under eye so when I got this I had really high hopes and when I started using it I was like okay it's not bad you know it's I guess it's helping but I felt like it was a placebo effect knowing that it was an under eye primer and I was like oh yeah it's working it's just like any under eye cream so if you have anything that works really well underneath makeup uh, NARS under eye cream any kind of NARS skin product always works great underneath makeup or any sort of gel that would be great too or just something that you find that soaks into your skin underneath your eyes will be just the same as this. So if you have been curious to try this, just because I have heard a couple people talk about it, it's pretty pricey, I think it's like 18 bucks. I'd rather spend like 18 bucks or even 30 bucks on a pot of under eye um, moisturizer or gel that's gonna last way longer than this little itty bitty tube because it's the same exact thing. It's just a moisturizing under eye product. I don't even see it as a primer. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not something that you really need. It's more like, uh, just use your under eye cream and you're good to go. So that was it for my first craps video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, nobody, I hope nobody gets sensitive or upset if I put down any product that works for you, but this was just my own personal experience. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and also subscribe to my channel because it is free 99 and I will see you guys in my next video. Mwah.